In this video, you will learn how to save a deep learning model in TensorFlow. Deep learning model is saved as .h5 file or .htf5 format. First, we will develop a basic sequential model, then save that model as .h5 file. Let's import all the libraries that are needed to develop a deep learning model. Import OS. Import NumPy as NP. Import TensorFlow as TF. From TensorFlow, import Keras. Let's execute our code. We are going to work on the MNIST data. I am going to load the data set in two tuples. So I will make two tuples, one for train and the other is for test. And then from MNIST data set, I am going to load the data and save in those two tuples. So let's make first tuple and this will contain train images and train labels. So in images we will have all the samples that is all the independent variables and in labels we will only have samples of our labels that is the target variable. Let's make one more tuple and this tuple will contains test images and test labels. Test images and test labels. Now from tensorflow dot keras dot dataset dot mnist load underscore data. So what we are saying here is from tensorflow dot keras dot datasets in datasets we have lot of data we have lot of different datasets. So from dataset we are we are going to load the MNIST data set and we will use the method load underscore data to load the data and save in these two tuples. The first one is for train and the second is for test. Let's execute our code. So we have successfully imported the data set and saved in these two, two tuples. Now let's check the shape of our train images and test images. So I will type train images dot shape so we have 60,000 samples here and 28 by 28 so this is a pixels 28 by 28 now let's also check the test images test images dot shape so in test data set we have 10,000 samples and the pixel size are 28 by 28 now let's look at the maximum and minimum number in train and test images so these data set contains some numbers uh, so let's look at the minimum and maximum numbers and for that we will use the numpy so from numpy i will call numpy dot minimum of train images so the minimum is zero that is we have numbers the data are stored as numbers so the minimum number is zero and now let's also look at the maximum number np dot max of train images and the maximum is 255 but our tensorflow deep learning model works on the data set which has values between 0 and 1 and they should be in float so here you can see that the minimum value is 0 that is fine but the maximum value is 255 we have to bring it down to 1 and the second thing is that these two numbers are integers they are not float so now we are going to divide the train images by 255 and convert that into a float so that the minimum will be 0, 0.0 and the maximum will be 1.0 we will similarly look at the test images so i'll copy this code from here and paste it here instead of train images i will type here test images so in test images also the minimum number is 0 and let's also look at the maximum number in test images instead of train I will type here test images the maximum number is 255 so we have to bring this also between 0 and 1 and in float all in float now I'm going to make one variable train images train images and you can see that we are working on the 
train images that is the independent variables we are not working on the labels here we have train labels and test labels also but we are not going to work on this train labels and test labels we are going to work only on this train images and test images that is the independent variables so now i am going to transform this into 0 and 1 and convert it into float so i will call train images dot reshape minus 1 28 by 28 and then finally divided by 255.0 so you can see that in train images the maximum number is 255 and we are dividing it by 255.0 0 because after dividing it we are converting the result into float that's why we are giving a decimal point here 0 0.0 now we will also make one more variable test underscore images and we will do the same thing here also test images dot reshape minus 1 28 by 28 and let's also divide this with 255.0 now let's execute our code so we have successfully converted our minimum and maximum values between 0 and 1 and also in float uh, we can verify I'll copy this code from here I'll paste it here now in the output you can see that we got the result in float 0, 0.0 so the minimum value is 0, 0.0 now let's look at the maximum value so I'll copy this code from here and paste it here and you can see that now the maximum value is 1.0 because tensorflow works great on the values between 0 and 1 that's why we convert all the numbers between 0 and 1 similarly for test images also we can verify we will copy this code from here paste it here and we can see that the minimum is 0, 0.0 let's also copy the maximum and paste it here we can see that the maximum is 1.0 so we have converted our minimum and maximum to 0 and 1 and also converted them into float now we are going to define a sequential model I'll make one variable model now from tensorflow.keras.models I will call the class sequential since we are defining a sequential model that's why I have called this class sequential from tensorflow.keras.models and inside this I will define the model parameters so the first one is going to be the dense layer so I will type keras dot layers dot dense so from keras we are defining the dense layer and this is going to be 512 and activation is going to be relu here 512 is the number of neurons that we are defining so these are going to be in the hidden layers and the activation function is relu then we will define the input shape here input shape and this is going to be 784 so if you multiply 28 into 28 you will get 784 I'll show you here 28 into 28 so you can see that we got 784 that's what we have defined here as input shape so we are just multiplying the pixels and passing it here I'll have to remove this bracket from here this bracket is not required and now I will close the bracket here next I will define the dropout layer so I will write keras dot layers dot dropout and this will be between 0 and 1 so I am putting 0 0.2 here you can put any number here then the last will be the dense layers keras dot layers dot dense and this is going to be 10 because the target variable contains 10 categories that is 10 classes are there so that's why we are defining 10 here now let's execute our code 
so we have defined the sequential model here now the next step is to compile the model so we will compile the model now I'll just delete this code from here uh, now we will compile the model so we will call our model which we have defined about this variable model model dot compile and here we have to first define the optimizer so optimizer is going to be Adam then we also define we also have to define the loss and our last loss is going to be categorical cross entropy so from tensorflow we will use losses dot sparse categorical cross entropy because our target variable contains 10 categories so we have to use this loss then we will pass one parameter here from logic is equal to true then we will define matrix and our matrix is going to be accuracy so from tensorflow dot matrix dot spark categorical accuracy so we will use this matrix here let's execute our code I have to put parenthesis here now let's run our code so we have compiled our model let's look at the architecture of the model we will use the method summary model dot summary in the output you can see that this is the architecture of our deep learning model so here we have the dense layer then we have dropout then these are the total parameters the next step is to fit the model so we will use the method fit we will say model dot fit and then we will pass train images train labels because we are going to fit the model on our train data set and then we will define the number of epochs and it is going to be 5 epochs is the number of time we want to run our deep learning model let's execute our code so we are fitting the model here this is the loss and this is the accuracy at the first epoch the accuracy is 93 percent and you can see that in the second epoch the accuracy has increased up to 97 percent and the loss was 0.22 in the first epoch and it has went down to 0.09 in the second epoch and you can see that the accuracy is increasing after every epoch so our final accuracy is 98% it started with 93% and now the highest accuracy is 98% at the fifth epoch here you can see epoch 5 by 5 here now comes the most important part that is how to save the model so it is very easy to save the model so we have to call model this is our model here which we have fitted here and then we have to call the function save and then we have to give our model name for example I will write my tensorflow my tensorflow model dot and we have to put the extension so I am writing dot h5 let's execute our code so I have successfully saved this model in my local directory and to check this I will go to the folder so I'll open the folder from here and I have this folder deep learning here you can see that I have successfully saved the model my tensorflow underscore model dot h5 you can verify from here my tensorflow underscore model dot h5 so we have successfully saved the deep learning model on our local directory this is how you can build a tensorflow model and save it 
so it is very easy to save the model in the next tutorial i will tell you how to read this model how to load this model and then how to retrain your model again so please watch my next tutorial it will come in two days and in that i will continue this in that i will uh, i'm going to load this same model and i will show you how you can load this model and how you can retrain your new data i hope you enjoyed this video if you like my video please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching